You think that Congress is going to get it together in the next few months and raise the debt ceiling? Oh, the debt ceiling. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. You do. I, I, the only question is how close they get to it before they do it, because you'll feel the pain before it happens. How much pain, even if we don't default, it's, I if we get to the brink? I think it's a bad idea. And you know, we, the, our government get, debt can be downgraded again. This economy is the pillar of the world economy. This economy is the pillar of taking care of Americans, t making sure our military is strong, uh, and making sure that people want to be part of our, our, our alliances. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you want to be part of the American group that you know, tries to keep the world safe for democracy? Yeah, that's important. So the closer we get to that, the more we're going to damage all of that. And then you'll see it in the markets. You'll see it. And that will, but, that will scare people. Well, I hope Washington's listening. The position of the Biden White House now is it will not negotiate with Republicans. And the Republicans, many of them, Kevin McCarthy, don't want to pass a clean. Uh, they yeah. want concessions. Yeah. So should the Biden White House negotiate? I think one of the great lessons of the last 20 years is that if you can't pass things with bipartisan support, you shouldn't pass it. I mean, it, it, we, yes, everyone should negotiate to do the right thing for the country. And I don't, I don't want to get involved in the debate about the Republicans who want to reduce the deficit. I kind of agree with that. The Democrats who would like now to get rid of the debt ceiling crisis. But people have tortured each other over and over. I'd rather one day we get rid of the torture. But in the meantime, yes, I'd like to be resolved. And when I go to Washington, all the, all the, most of the people there know how serious this is. And they want to get it to resolution. You've even heard Kevin McCarthy talk about that, Mitch McConnell. You know, President Biden in his own way. You have um, called out the Biden administration uh, for not playing more of a leadership role in energy, um, especially uh, you said, look, America should have been pumping more oil and gas, should have been supported. This administration did just approve more drilling in Alaska. Good start. It's a good start, but it's just a start. I mean, th this is a long term strategy to me that oil and gas and the American public should know this. It's not secure. And if it's not secure and affordable, it's bad for the climate. All that happened because we weren't pumping more is that more coal was used, not just in India, Philippines, China, and Indonesia, but Germany and Netherlands and France turned back on their coal plants. Safe and affordable is critical. The transition, by the way, the, best, the easiest way to do CO2 is reduce coal with gas. So therefore, you need pipelines. But we're not, you know, look at us. We're not approving pipeline permits, but nor are we approving solar, wind, grid. Like, we're, we're really stuck in our own underwear in this one. Stuck we, in our own underwear? We, we, we have to do a better job. Can I ask and, you yeah. about a few states? Yeah. Um, you guys have more employees now in Texas than in New York. Yeah. And you said it shouldn't have been that way. Why is it that way? Texas is, is completely welcoming. So if you look at it in multiple ways, low income taxes, low corporate taxes, uh, and, and easy to get space. They want you, God, you know, the mayor's call. and. Uh, they have great universities. They now have, you know, if you look at Dallas, they now have great arts and science. It, it's, it's become a competitive world. Even when I started working, that wasn't true. Now, cities around the world are pretty competitive. You also and I think every city should say, you know, what's the competition? And they should be thoughtful about that. If you have the highest individual taxes, the highest corporate taxes, the highest estate taxes, anti-business, you can't look at, you know, New York didn't allow Amazon to build a great headquarters there. There's like, a was that little more context to that, but I, I understand you. that. But it just, but why would you try to build in New York then? You're building a huge, right. huge new yeah, headquarters well, right we're, in the middle of New York. Yes, the um, most, one of the best buildings the world's ever seen. Yeah. You love Florida. In fact, a few weeks ago, you said you were very pro-Florida. You're growing there. Does Governor DeSantis punishing Disney for taking a public stand on social and diversity issues give you pause? Not directly, no. Really? Because, yes, this week Bob Iger said that's anti-business and anti-Florida. And he said it's punishing a company for exercising a constitutional right. Yeah. I'm not going to get involved in all the social <laughs> stuff like that. We support an LGBT community aggressively and actively. And you'll but, still but when, do that when you in talk Florida about despite DeSantis? Yes. Okay. I want to ask you about something that is in the news, that J.P. Morgan is in the news about uh, a former client of yours, and that is Jeffrey Epstein. J.P. Morgan's being sued now by the U.S. Virgin Islands. They're alleging that your bank helped facilitate payments to Epstein's victims and benefited from human trafficking while ignoring warnings. Do those allegations have merit? So I cannot talk about current litigation except to say that whenever these things come up, we have some of the best lawyers in the world, compliance, out of the DOJ, out of SEC enforcement divisions who review all of these things and make decisions at the time based on what they know, as best as they know. 
They're going to be deposed, we've learned now, in this case in the spring. In retrospect, Jamie, do you think J.P. Morgan should have acted more quickly after Epstein pleaded guilty to one of these charges in 2008 because he was your client for five more years? Hindsight is a fabulous gift. We're going to end on artificial intelligence. You find it fascinating, in your words, staggering, the tip of the iceberg. You guys are using chat GPT. What's this going to do to our economy? I think it would be OK. Every technology that's ever been adopted was good for the economy. And you know, I tell people, if you go back to 1900, 40 million people worked on farms. You know, technology is now 1 million people. Are we worse off? No, 39 million people now doing other things. So the internet, electric power, computers, all made us better off. Our GDP per person is $70,000. Yes, this per is- Per person? What if we get replaced? But you won't be. It'll, it'll just change how you work and add things. Really? But, but if it did, okay, but if it did, then society can step in and make sure it's done in a way that people can have jobs and good paying jobs, but we get the benefit from it. The other thing I should point about AI, there is a downside. Bad guys are going to use it too. Yep. So, you know, for people like us, we use it for all these things. We also have to, you know, like think of risk and fraud and marketing and you know, uh, errors, you know, helping clients. We also have to use it to combat, combat bad guys in the cyber world, the fake ID world, and things like that. So, uh, so I think it'll be a plus. But if, do a thought exercise. Two million truckers, if they're going to lose their jobs tomorrow because of you know, AI driving, you know, and they're going to go from $75,000 a year to the next job at 25, that would destroy families. I wouldn't do that. I would phase it in over time, have retraining. So even you know, if you uh, could, have, doesn't mean you should. Even if you could does not mean you should. And that's where society should step in and government should step in and make sure that th this helps you know, kind of everybody. Really and then if there's someone who's going to get hurt at the low end, do something about it. Analyze it, think about it, retrain, reskill, help them move uh, or whatever to have probably a better job.